Well, I have a really special program for you guys today. It's one that I have promised for a very long time. <laughs> it's all about boxwood, different varieties, their care and maintenance. And I think that it's a topic that couldn't be more timely. So I'm here with my friend, Fran. I'm at TLC, one of our local independent nurseries and growers. And we're here to talk just about that, about boxwood in topiary form, in shrub form, different varieties and some of the experiences that we've all had as boxwood lovers over the recent challenges, weather challenges that we've had. Mm -hmm. So Fran, if we can, let's start here with my favorite of all topiary. Boxwood is topiary. It makes a brilliant medium for topiary. And then if we could just kind of walk around sure. and you could share some of the different types. Fran is the expert. And let me say one more thing. When you come to your independent uh, garden centers, please tap into resources like Fran and ask them questions. Um, if you're having issues, then they are a wonderful wealth of knowledge. So take it away. All right. These green velvet boxwoods, these are topiaries. You just kind of keep them trimmed a little bit. But otherwise, they don't grow very fast, so they do great in pots in the ground as as you know either side of the door or even on the ends uh, so that's about all i can say about those so, they're very easy to maintain now the the topiary that i have are mostly green mountain but i mostly have found green, green velvet performs very much like green uh, mountain most boxwoods that are in topiary form will perform the same way okay uh, none of them grow very fast uh, unless they get more sun if they're in the shade they're going to grow really really slow yeah yeah. So uh, this is the green velvet over here. We don't have it in topiary. We just have it in bush form. Okay. Right now. So. Okay. Um, so this is. We have that one. Yeah. These are green velvets. Okay. So we have all green velvet. I do not most of my topiary of green mountain, and I think today I'm going to go home with yet another mm -hmm. topiary as a, a green velvet, and the you can create these yourselves but if you really want to make an investment i think in a really beautiful it's topiary it's out. easier to start like this for the large ones small ones it's easy to create your own but but green velvet and green mountain are both varieties that do extremely well in oklahoma and they're pretty readily available pretty much uh the uh these bigger ones, they come a little later, and so they don't. We don't have those as often. Okay. But we'll have uh, three gallons coming up here soon, that are a little smaller than this. The bush ones, everybody always asks why they have white on the edges. Uh -huh. That is from over fertilizing in the greenhouse. It's oh. nothing that we've done, but it's come in that way. Okay. When they get at home, it's going to turn plain green. I've always but they're going to look like that, that because thought... of over fertilizing. Yeah. I thought that was a genetic thing, mm -hmm, so no. that's interesting. But it doesn't hurt them. It does not hurt them no. to be over fertilized no. with that. Okay, that is good to know because periodically I'll see that same effect in mm -hmm. Green Mountain. Okay, I learned something today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for yep, that. Yep. Now let's talk a little bit about cold hardiness because um, I've spoken ad nauseum about the really extreme weather that we have had. We got down to minus 13 degrees, and these are cold hardy three to seven. So I imagine they can take. They, they can take a little bit. Uh, they have turned yellow, they have turned red. Okay. Red is better than yellow. Uh, it's better than brown. Right, <laughs> okay. right, right. Uh, if you're yet red and yellow, it is still alive. Uh, we have found that most of everything that went through this freeze is still alive. Uh, we're going to just treat them as a living thing. We're going to water and fertilize. Yeah, and, and so we're basically be water and patient. feeding and be patient. Yeah. Now, if if someone has, and I have many of these, a splayed, say, boxwood ball or boxwood shrub that is very much alive, but it's been damaged on the interior and some of the limbs and the trunks have cracked, how do you, how do you help that plant recover? About the only way is to trim those out because they're not going to come back. Okay. Um, how, and, how drastically can we trim those back? Uh, I would say pretty drastically, but I'd wait until the 1st of April. Okay. And just give them a good reshaping and then fertilize them real good and they will blush back out. Okay. It's going to take a little longer if it's been split because all that has to grow back. Yeah. So, yeah. but 
fertilizing on a regular basis is going to help that. It's going to help. And it is, we're filming this, it's March 11th today, mm -hmm. and you and I were talking that we, I am in a zone 7B area, mm -hmm. but I think it's pretty safe right now, especially I'm always um, advising everyone to look at their 10 day forecast, but we've got a rain in the forecast. So if you do too, in your neck of the woods, fertilizing right before you're gonna mm -hmm. get a good rain most, will really uh, help the soil. Most granular fertilizers, it has to be 40 degrees consistently at night for them to okay. activate. So that's why we try to say wait, but mm -hmm. we're in a perfect time right now because our temperatures are gonna stay a yeah. little bit up and so being we're getting rain is a fantastic thing because it's going to really help yeah and and so. yesterday again i always also talk about how gardening is contextual to where you are yesterday you just told me it got up to 81. It got up to 81 yesterday. here and our temperatures have been hovering it's around been. 40. <laughs> this morning she and i were talking and it was probably 20 degrees warmer when we first got up this morning yeah. than it is now so I think that's one of the challenges with all of our plant material is the extremes. The extremes are very, very tough here. And, and I think... And, but unfor unfortunately, these boxwoods, if we had not gotten down to the 13 or 14 or whatever we were down to in, in our neck of woods, they would have been fine. They would have been Because they fine. are hardy, 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 hardy. But we had a record-breaking... <laughs> A uh, thing that uh, yes. damaged a lot yes, of things. Yes, we did. Okay, and let's move so. on and talk about a few more varieties, Fran. So we've got English boxwood here, and I don't plant a lot of English boxwood. English I boxwoods, they have to have shade. They're a full shade plant. It's a smaller leaf. Um, they cannot take the sun. And I, I have also found I'm a little bit more reticent. They're just not as tough. I think they're more prone to boxwood blight. Mm. We're not gonna go into that all today. I'll talk about that in the future. Um, but I, we're, I'm so attracted by their tiny, tight yeah. foliage. They do lend themselves well to clipping. And being that, that it's that like, like that, if you start small, they're going to stay small. Right. If you want bigger, you're going to have to go have bigger to because them. they do not grow. Right. At a very right. fast. Speed. So, but they're fun. I think tiny little clipped mm -hmm. boxwood balls are fun, especially if you keep them in a shady area. Now let's talk about variegated English boxwood. And again, the variegated has to be in the shade. Okay. Uh, it will not take Oklahoma heat at all. Um, they can be trimmed anyway. Any of these boxwoods basically just a good hard trim well, later. Help them. Will help <laughs> Don't them. do it yet. Yeah. Uh, they're going to come back. Now I with, have with these. Uh, I have a few of these in my landscape, and they really turned brown. Mm, so yeah. I'm hoping, See, these did too in here. Yeah. So uh, mine are kind of crispy, really, really kind of crispy <laughs> yellow brown. But do you um, think they'll do a scratch test? Okay. Uh, take take the stem right here and just scratch it if it's still green. Uh, you're going to have, it's going to be alive. Okay. And sometimes so, I have found on that scratch test, it's kind of a yellowy green, mm -hmm, or it's yeah. kind if of hard to tell. If you see any green at all, I, it's alive. It's alive. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. that, uh, that is a great tip. Yes, so shade, if you're going to grow one mm -hmm. of these variegated varieties, I definitely have now, found. Now, just FYI, it's going to take some time for these to come back. Because they are such a slow grower, even fertilizing, it's going to take some time to get all those leaves back on. Yeah. So basically a better trim they're not going to have to put up as much energy as what they would otherwise okay so, so just be patient be just patient. like with our be patient. kids mm -hmm. we have to yeah. we have to be patient okay this is one i am not familiar with at all this uh, is faulkner, faulkner is just another uh, dwarf little boxwood it kind of grows in a you know topiary type I mean, a, you know, a kind of a Christmas tree Columnar type. form. So uh -huh. it's naturally a pyramidal. Uh, yes, it's it naturally mm -hmm. this shape. It has a smaller leaf. Okay. Uh, just a different type of boxwood. Okay. And it's pretty, it's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. um, we've got more variegated, more variegated boxwood we got them here. All sizes. Before we move to another area with different varieties, Let's talk about what I think of as a boxwood doppelganger. Mm. These topiaries of emerald colonnade, but these are hollies, correct? These are hollies. Uh, in my experience with these, these do better in pots than they do in the ground. Um, in, the, in the ground, they have to be in some shade. Uh, okay. They just cannot take our heat and they take a little more water. Okay. Um, you can see by these, they got cold. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Will these come out damage. of it, you think? Uh, pro uh, probably, but again, scratch test will tell the everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you can tell that's freezer burn on those. And right. I I have not. I've planted these before because they are so seductive. Mm -hmm. They are just so beautiful, and you often see them in this triple poodle form. That's how they normally come, yeah. And um, but I just I just don't find them to be as tough. Yeah, so they're as, like a, like I told you earlier. It's a zone seven. It yeah. is a zone seven to ten. It's it's further yeah. this way. So. so seven to ten versus these that were like three mm -hmm. and up. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good to know. It's also important to point out that these are hollies. So these make hollies. sure sometimes this is a male you, holly. It will not have any berries, berries at or, all. Uh -huh. uh, um, just make sure that you look at the tag because sometimes it's easy to be fooled and think this is a uh, boxwood a lot of when it's look really like a, a holly. Boxwood leaf, yeah. And and normally in most nurseries, you'll find them close to the boxwood, mm -hmm. so it can make it that much more confusing. Exactly. So that's that's kind of something else. Okay, let's move to a different area, Fran, if we can. Now, wintergreen is a variety I'm really familiar with because this is what I have in its entirety in my potager as a boxwood hedge. Wintergreen's so, been around for a very long time. Um, I call this the grandma wintergreen, and this is the grandma <laughs> yes. boxwood because you, your grandma probably had it at one time. These are very hardy boxwoods. Uh, they do well in the shade or in the sun. Mm -hmm. It's about the only one that does. Yeah. Good so, to know. Um, and I have found that it all, it seems to grow a little bit faster. Uh, if it has a little bit of sun. Yeah. If it's in the shade, it's a little slower. But yeah, if it gets a little bit of sun, it's going to get up to four feet pretty fast. Yeah, and yeah. mine grows pretty fast because it is in the sun, but I have found it to be very forgiving of both heat and cold, even during that horrific drought and hot spell mm -hmm. we had. Yeah. Was that in 2010, I think? or? Um, large portions of it died well, you back. Know, the nice thing about boxwoods is they don't require a whole lot of water. Yeah. Unless they're getting a lot of sun. They may need a little bit more, but in the shade, they really don't require a whole lot of water. Yeah. Because uh, they can be overwatered. So a good drought tolerant. Very good, good drought, drought tolerant, tolerant plant. plant. Um, the other thing I like about wintergreen, if you're trying to be economical, it's typically a little bit less pricey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually this, <laughs> yeah, it's one of the cheaper boxwoods. Um, yeah, so if, if economics is a factor for you like mm -hmm. it is for most of us, then especially if you're gonna plant a large expanse of it. Oh, sure. Because um, little one gallons start at $9.99. Yeah. Um, and everything else starts at 12 or 16. Right. So it is a cheaper box. And rate. a lot of times if I'm gonna start a topiary from a one gallon plant, I'll start with a wintergreen because a lot of times you can find a good strong central sure. stem and it will grow fast enough to sure. transform into Very a topiary. Sure. Okay, baby gem is also one of my favorite uh, varieties, partly because it simulates the look of English boxwood a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, it's a little more tight. Uh, it's always gonna stay a little tight. It might get some that grows a little taller. You just trim that off. Yeah. Uh, but this is probably our most popular boxwood is in it? here because um, people just like the the more conformed. Yes, plant uh, look. size. Southern Living makes a baby gem boxwood, so I I love it and I plant a lot of it. It also anecdotally I think is the best boxwood if you're trying to establish a square form yeah. because of the way it the way grows. It grows. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So, well, let's move back here and talk about some of these others. We've got, uh, t talk to me about winter gem, another common variety. Uh, winter gem is just a bigger leaf. Uh, it always comes in kind of trimmed, uh, but they will get wider, uh, but they don't get very tall. So they're gonna stay two to three, um, but it's always in that, that cut. So you just kind of maintain that cut uh, if you want that look. In, in contrast to baby gem, the the leaf is a little bit larger, maybe a little bit more open in growing form than the baby gem, but obviously makes a beautiful topiary. Mm -hmm, it does, yeah. Yeah, love it. And very cold, tough, Good, drought tolerant, tough, yeah. the, the whole business. Okay, describe to me a little bit, some of them have put out little flowers. Uh, that is Tell their spring flower. Uh, every boxwood flowers. Uh, that's when you kind of get that 
smell that nobody likes. Yeah, the cat, the cat <laughs> urine smell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that is the flower. You usually don't see it unless you're looking for it. Uh huh. Uh, we see it in here because we're right here with them. Right. Um, but. You usually just smell it. You don't see it. Yeah, I, I find it's just a novelty, and I, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I get, I get kind of a kick out of it. I think it's, it's. But kind that's of the fun. insignificant <clears throat> thing of boxwoods. The, the leaf is the thing. Yeah, it's so. the leaf, the foliage, mm -hmm. the architecture that they provide to their garden. Okay, uh, we've got Stuart. We've got some more over here. Some this more is Green, Green Mountain. Mountain topiary. These are topiaries in any kind. Um, they all will get about five feet by three. Uh, again, grow really slow, but you can get them in spirals, uh, columnar, uh, in your topiary type. There's different, I have found in different parts of the country, there tend to be a lot of different varieties that oh, sure. I don't see here. For example, here, okay, we've got Green Tower here. This is one we don't see uh, a This is whole a lot. Monrovia Special uh, Green Tower. It's just a tall, skinny one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get much wider unless something falls out. Yeah, so um, more of a fastigit upright mm -hmm. form. And we have it in all different sizes. Yeah, in different sizes. And typically, I found in Oklahoma, if you want different varieties than the norm, um, it's better to go to your independent mm, local yeah. nursery if you've got if you're looking for one reason or another for a special variety like this green tower. Because a lot of people want skinny stuff in shade mm -hmm. areas, and these skinny boxwoods, uh, they're going to be a little more expensive because they are a specialized skinny right. boxwood. Most boxwoods get fat. Uh, and I we, bet they're a bit, are they tougher than Sky Pencil Hollies? Oh, by far. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so if you're looking for an alternative to a Sky Pencil Holly, then this Green Tower Boxwood would be a good, you know, mm -hmm. would be a good choice. And they've got little baby, there's little baby, baby ones, ones too. It'll and take a little while for those to get gallons. up, but um, <laughs> they I, will be skinny little guys coming up. If you want, I, at my house, I love just a series of small boxwoods in pots, and I have oh, kind sure. of a boxwood theater. So last week when I was here, I, I did an Instagram story where I was talking about a little tip, and that's at Christmas time, they're a little bit less expensive. And so if you see any red pots left over into the growing season, a lot of times, like this one here is 79 right. versus, uh, it, yeah, 129, yeah, 129 for that pot, size pot. So sometimes that's a good idea if they have, if they have any left over. And then again, I've got uh, lust in my heart. I, I just can't have too many topiary boxwood. Fran, thank you so much. Um, oh, before we leave, there was one thing that we were talking about that I want to make sure that we communicate to you guys. Tell me what you were saying about the location of boxwood being on the north side of a structure or on the south side. Uh, they can go either spot, um, but they need Boxwoods do a lot better in the shade. They are a shade plant. Uh, make sure and ask an associate when you come in, if, and they will tell you whether it will work in the sun or not. But most boxwoods are a shade plant. But, but this winter... This the winter, they got hit. They got hit, but the ones that were on the north side... Did fine. Did better than the ones on the south side. On the south side, if they were out away from the house, uh, they probably look brown. Uh -huh. They probably look have a little red on them. Uh, fertilize, 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 because they they think that what happened was the sun hit them when mm -hmm. it was cold, and that's what caused them to do yeah. that. So, um, but again, yeah. sometimes it's those temperature fluctuations that mm -hmm. really can cause problems where they're going from one extreme to another and a lot of them get just literally get sunburned mm -hmm. <laughs> like we can get sunburned. Fran thank you no, so much. Welcome. I you're appreciate welcome. it. Ask for Fran if you come into TLC. I'm at the one on Memorial Road mm -hmm. and she's here most every day. Every day except Tuesday. And every day except Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> so always remember to ask an associate. They TLC does have a garden club. We do. That you can sign up for. I'll put a link below. But by all means, check out your independent local nursery as a resource for both plants and great information. Fantastic. Thanks.